series of integers decrementing by one. <coughs> n plus negative one. I'm making the tweet plus now. plus negative two. N plus negative three. Ah, that's why. Well, I could have told you that. That's why I lost the video. I was setting up at one there. Okay, that's better. Oop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very short today, Melissa. Is it? I know. <laughs> I feel short. Tweeted. Oh, having King Kong up above you. Oh, we're all tweeted now? All tweeted and ready to go oh. in five, four, three. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> Hello, world, and welcome to another edition of the Geek Life TV podcast at thegeeklife.tv. This is episode 234 for the week of September 1st, 2014. With me on this Deus Ex panel of what? geek and nerdy what? Comment what? commenters. <laughs> what is we've this? Got, we've got on this panel. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't approve this. We've got <laughs> Melissa. Hi. We've got Paul. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And we've got Michael. God as panel. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> Fess, trying to do the best I can. <laughs> well, I wanted to say, like, no, like, dais, as in, like, a panel of people. Well, like, a dais. That's not a panel of people. No. Well, dais is, yeah. is an elevated piece yeah, of floor. Floor that the king sits on, or the important people. Well, this is more I, like I a star chamber. I thought he was going with Latin and Deus Ex. Well, I see. I thought well, Deus Ex I Machina went too. Went Latin after that. Well, okay. So I just remember, like Lisa Lampanelli and one of the one of the Comedy Central roasts kept referring to the group of roasters as a dais. Well, they were probably on a dais. Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. Oh. We are not going anywhere with this. <laughs> so, comics, oh, hey, videos. That stuck in my head. I will <laughs> and beat you or just keep throwing Tom's Diner at you. I hate you. Oh, Amadeus. Actually, I always like the Amadeus version, but... Video releases. <sighs> yeah, so... Not a whole hell of a lot's coming out this week, so Damn we've got... Time. I know, I know, there's like nothing new, uh, with the exception of Alejandro Jodorowsky's uh, Dance of Reality is out Ooh. on Blu-ray. So now you can see it if it didn't come out in the art house theaters in your town. Ooh. So yay, yay, I know what I'm buying after after I'm... I can, I have the time to... You hit Amazon, so yay! New Hodorowski, which means this is his fourth film ever in the last 40 years, 45 yeah. years. Anyway, uh, catalog titles, uh, some more interesting things than that. We've got the Universal Monsters Blu-rays. So, like, a whole crap ton of Universal Monster movies just hit Blu-ray, and you can buy them in all big box sets. Cool. Yeah! That's super cool. Also on Blu-ray, you have the Frank Langella Dracula you know, the one with Frank Langella as Dracula and Laurence Olivier as Van Helsing, and that's pretty cool, too. Cool. Also on Blu-ray, Godzilla vs. Megalon, which is the one where you see Gigan. Yay! Yeah. Buzzsaw in your chest. <coughs> Monsters. Wee! <laughs> uh, also, Legend of Hell House, Blu-ray with uh, Roddy McDowell. That's a lovely thing. Uh, also, What's New Pussycat on Blu-ray, and Cast a Giant Shadow with Kirk Douglas on Blu-ray. Criterion has some fun stuff. Uh, first of all, it's got they're bringing out Vengeance is Mine, uh, Shohei Imamura's film on Blu-ray. Also, all that jazz, all the Bob Fosse you can handle on Blu-ray <laughs> with Roy Scheider as Bob Fosse, essentially. Directed by Bob Fosse. So much Bob Fosse. It's a very interesting movie. Very strange movie. Very 70s. I do recommend it. Title of the week. There were, you know, fair to Midland offerings this week in terms of title of the week. You know, you had the Amateur Porn Star Killer Collection, which oh, yeah. I can find a lot of really questionable things about just in the title because you've got 
first of all, the title Amateur Porn Star Killer. Now, is this an amateur killer of porn stars? Is it amateur porn stars that are getting killed by a killer? Is it amateur porn killer of stars? I don't know, but whatever it is, there's a lot of them because there's an actual box set. <laughs> okay, so... Yep. yep. Okay. That's a, also, Pot Zombies 2, which amuses me because there, there must have been a Pot Zombies 1 along the way somewhere. But the winner this week has to go to My Fair Zombie. Because, <laughs> because it's, it's a zombie adaptation of My Fair Lady. And of course, the byline is the rain in Spain lays mainly in the brains. Oh. 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 Uh, yeah, I know. I know. That's just but, hurts. But you know, that's what it takes to win title of the week is is that level of effort. <laughs> and that's what I got. <laughs> so comics. Yes, comics. <clears throat> so uh, on a on a related note, uh, and I we, we I tweeted this earlier on the Geek Life TV uh, Twitter handle, um, but if any of our listeners happens to have the MP3 of the episode in which Christopher Danger uh, Jones Esquire. Well, DC uh, was DC, it Marvel Comics? Wait, 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 DC comic book artist Christopher Danger Jones Esquire. Him. Yes. If yes. if anybody has that episode, uh, we had long lost it for some reason. It wasn't in our databanks. It was just gone, and. Uh, I did get a tweet back from Christopher Jones going, oh no, does this mean we have to do another episode? Oh darn! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? And I, I, I did reply, you know, saying, you know, if we must, I mean, because I know how much he hates, you know, appearing on podcasts. So. <laughs> yes, but could he redo it exactly? <laughs> I didn't even remember that he was on the I, I've I was the there two. on the couch. I ended up commenting on, we were talking about, like, oh, comicsology right. and and and, and uh, you know distribution. Oh, that's, that's right. I remember that now. Okay. 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 I was trying to be quiet, but I you know couldn't shut up at some point. You know, you know, like me. Well, I yeah, I yeah. So anyway, so um, if anybody has that podcast, um, let us know. Uh, otherwise, you know, we'll probably try to set up a a, a Redux episode. <laughs> so we should just have them on in general. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. You know, get, young justice. You know, get another Christopher Jones bump. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> that just sounds wrong. <laughs> and uh, so it's somewhat comics related, but I'm putting it here anyway because it's everywhere, as well as in comics, as well as animation and toys. Uh, Hello Kitty is not a kitty, apparently. <laughs> it's it's a cartoon character that is a grade schooler. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not a kitty. Yep. It's not a cat because it's not on all fours. It walks in its hind legs. So basically, they're admitting so, that it's a furry. Well, well, and she has a cat for a pet. I, I that was one of the things they had said. And, and Mickey sister. Mouse has a friend that's a dog, as well as has a dog. Well, yeah. she also has a sister that's also a furry, I guess. And this is after the big brouhaha of Sanrio, the company that does Hello Kitty. Debating whether they when they're going to do the kiss version of Hello Kitty, if they're going to have the tongue on or not for um, what's his face? I'm forgetting his name Gene at the Simmons? moment. Gene Simmons. Simmons. Yes, it was like a big deal because she doesn't have a mouth. They decided it was a costume, so she could have the tongue. I mean, well, that was like a big internal corporate debate at Sanrio. So after all this, they're now saying, "Oh, by the way, she's a girl in a costume." She's yeah, British. Hey, she's British. Oh, well, that explains everything. I, <laughs> okay. yeah. that, I, I don't think that explains anything at all. <laughs> I just have more questions. Well, I have questions like, then, what, what is Botsmaru? What is Hanamaru? Those, that's the uh, penguin and the seal, for those who don't know. Um, there's the dog. I, there's a whole host I'm of characters. I'm going to guess they're not a seal, they're not a dog, they're not well, the a penguin. The dog is a dog because it's on all fours. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Penguin walks on two feet. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's like it they're well, basically yeah. furries. It's a humanoid. Anth it's a it's a humanoid anthropomorphized animal, of which I call a furry character. 
but you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, but why would they ask you? You know, Ouch. why would they ask any of us? I mean, you know, it wasn't, like, enough it wasn't money. like a slight against him. It Who wasn't cares? like directed at him, you know, specifically, just kind of in general. Why would they even care? What, what we have to say. Uh, Apparently they do care because somebody that was supposed to be like a spokesperson for them, they like oh, you know, previewed his script and they're like, no, 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 you cannot say that she's a cat. Yeah, it was some anthropologist was doing research and was was corrected by them before yeah. she went on stage. And so then they then they officially came out in the press conference. But they yeah, do it's... care what they <laughs> have to say. This is the sort of news we have a week before Apple announces its next products, folks. Mm. So. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, good timing on Apple's part. I, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Get your new not Hello Kitty phone case for your new iPhone. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Alex Alonzo. Alex Alonzo acknowledges and apologizes, kind of, for the Spider-Man number one cover. For those who don't know, this is the... Cover by Milo Mineras. Mineras. I'm not sure how you say his name correctly. Mineras. Mineras' variant cover depicting Spider Woman as a contorted ass cheek spread position, um, crunched over and such. If, guys, click that second link from the boobs don't work that way Tumblr <laughs> to see somebody who recreated the 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 cover with uh, a CG uh, a CG image of a woman, and then the side view of how exactly contorted this person, this uh, Spider Woman, is. I believe I've so seen that. Pull the, that off. The, the amazing thing about that image, well, beyond everything, but <laughs> the, the most amazing part is how her head just kind of floats in front of the body. I mean, <laughs> when you see like, yeah. her hair. How her hair is laying, it's like there is no th neck there. There is absolutely no neck. <laughs> Did he go the to the hair... Rob Liefeld School of Drawing and Perspective? Because <laughs> I swear it, it's that's that bad. And and ignoring, I I can't, I can't even get to the point of critiquing the fact that Lycra doesn't work the way he draws it. Oh yeah, because um, that's just body paint. That's yeah. got to be body paint because that's not that's not any sort of clothing. Yeah, and oh, it's just, it's just, I know. Granted, there was kind of you know even. Wendy kind of made the statement of, well, when you hi hi hire Milo Moneras, this is what you get. So, Well, I mean, but, yes, and that's exactly the sort of work he does. Right. Which, you know, fair enough. That's the right. work. It, art is the work an artist does. But right. Marvel's choice to hire him on oh, yeah. a book that's marketed, being marketed to women <clears throat> is kind of questionable. Oh yeah. Because when you hire Milo Moneras and get something like this back, you shouldn't be surprised. No, no. You, you, yeah, the art you're getting back, you shouldn't be surprised. But really, I agree. Really, you're going to use it for this cover and this. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's stupid looking. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a bad. It's just plain a bad piece of art, you know. Just yeah. Little, yeah. But, you'll, you'll but it, I mean, I don't. I kind of don't blame Milo Moneris for that cover because he is doing what he was hired to do. The problem is is that Marvel hired him to do that on that right. book. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I like the one comment that's on there. It's like, well, that's disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a lovely post on uh, the Mary Sue uh, uh, where uh, somebody basically did drawovers and anatomy con corrections on several Milos Moneris uh, covers, mm. which is actually pretty nice because it's like a step-by-step, -step, okay, here's how somebody with proper anatomy training can draw this exact same cover and pretty much the same pose, but make it look believable and make it look like a real woman and still make yeah. it look like a superhero. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, This the image has gone around... The block a fair amount of times. <laughs> yeah, because it's hilarious and disturbing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like even look at the original, even without the the position. It's like, yeah, it's it's freaking body paint. It's like there's no question. It's body paint. Yeah. It, well. It's it's like come on, you just come on. It's like 2000, almost 2015. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Stop. Can we, can we draw some clothes. For Bad. Anyway, 
Speaking of San Diego Comic Con convention, <laughs> nobody wants to pay for it, so it's not going to expand. End of story, basically. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yep, but now it's official. No, they're done. It's they're back to the drawing board. Is is what Robot Six reports essentially, and uh, so that's that. So they just can't cut off attendance at whatever number they can sustain and say that's that and. <laughs> I don't think they would. I don't think they care. Um, I don't care to go, so I don't really care. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm more of the, just, you know, let it choke on itself to death. You know, let let it fail. If it gets to that point, you know, I don't care. No, 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 Other... no. Well, no, it, the issue with the Comic-Con Convention Center is mm -hmm. the, the Comic-Con is getting too large. I mean, they, yeah. they do cap. Uh, attendance, but there there are there's still the tickets. So either the convention expands, the convention moves, and that's the danger. Is that fiction is looking at other places like say Anaheim to have that that would be able to support larger right. crowds, mm -hmm. and this is a convention that produces millions of dollars annually for San Diego and if they can't expand the convention center to accommodate the Comic Con all that goes away to a different township so that's what's at stake here yep. alright fair enough um, so uh, that brings me to Comic of the Week um, this one's a little bit of an old one and it's actually ended um, but it's a comic of the week I never got to pick before. It's Silent Pirate at silentpirate.com. It's uh, it's a mostly d uh, dialogue-less uh, comic. And what is what is that type of comic called? A comic. Forget. Well, it's a comic that doesn't use dialogue, and there's a particular word for it. Hmm. Um, but uh, it uses you know a lot of setup or sometimes speech balloons or thought balloons with that incorporate pictures to spell out what they're thinking or what they want to do or what the plan is. And it's basically this uh, this little kid that runs off, essentially, and, and joins a pirate crew. And, of course, they go on adventures and things like that. One of the things I really liked about uh, this comic, it was uh, uh, Ahmed Fahim, uh, who I met at uh, PenguinCon uh, many years ago, who just got a table to he didn't have a comic or anything yet but he was just drawing stuff for people as they came by and uh, you know and this is like one of his his first major venture of just like you know you just gotta start making a comic and just see where it goes and, and that's your practice and just plow on forward so it's like uh, I think it had a fairly decent following for um, you know a startup comic and he with it for the longest time, so it's like you know, kudos for that, and and, and it's a really uh, fun little comic, so you can read up on the whole uh, series at SilentPirate.com. That's my comic of the week pick. On to tech. Yeah, we have, tech. tech. We have an we have an update. We have an update on the selfie monkey image. Ooh, <laughs> selfie monkey. Selfie monkey. Selfie you monkey. U.S. regulators say they will not register copyright to images, quote, produced by nature, unquote, though the photographer might be able to claim intellectual rights in the U.K. And, uh, um, so... Well, it just says the monkey can't, cl can't claim copyright. No, the, the U.S. regulators will not register a copyright mm -hmm. to an image produced by nature, so therefore okay. the, person, the person whose camera... Uh, it belonged to cannot claim the copyright of it because it was not produced by him. It was produced, quote unquote, by nature. With his camera. With, With his, his camera, camera that he spent time setting up the shot. Yada yada yada. I had this rant two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. Um, so. Right. <laughs> and Melissa actually brought up some points last time about like what about people that set up like, you know, automatic photo taking. Right. Things, Basically, you know. the bulk of nature photography as we know it. <laughs> I don't know. It's maybe because it's deliberately set up for that versus oh, a monkey stole my camera and is taking pictures. But it, <laughs> never mind. He kind of gave the monkeys his camera, but we won't get into that. Oh, was it gave or was it it was taken? Set it out for them to take after gaining trust, taking several days to get to this point, hoping for the results. Hmm. It was not stolen. Hmm. 
Um, a, lot, a lot of what, a lot of the story is basically um, uh, British uh, tabloid blather to make it sound better than it really is. Because if you go like to the Newsweek article, it gets into what he actually did to get to that point, and that yes, the monkeys did have the camera, but he got it to a point where they were, felt safe around him. He's able to get the camera out there for them to play with it. He wanted them to interact with the camera. Mm. So it's it's. You can debate it to, to the cows come home. I tend to be on the side of the photographer in this one because I think it sets a dangerous precedent for other nature of photography where you try to do things like this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to me, the, the other problem is that, um, what's his face, the Wikimedia, I think, was kind of being annoying about it. But, but yeah, the U.S. has declared that, yeah, basically humans have to take the photo to get copyright. Woo-hoo. The monkey can't claim copyright either. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's the other result of this ruling is that is uh, Wikimedia was trying to say the monkey had copyright and according to this ruling is the monkey doesn't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> so wow! That, screw you, monkey! No royalties. <laughs> Why'd you have to do it, you bastard? Sorry. Oh, is that that's something else? Let me point out. Luckily, they specified monkeys and not apes. <laughs> Because they only have a small species problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does that make the photo public domain then, or? I don't know. I'd have to. Technically, it never should have got, gone to this. It's all well, yeah, like the but, media did. Yeah. So I, I I will state that that uh, Fortune or whatever the article I read reproduced the picture with his name and his publisher's name underneath the picture for credit and and paid appropriate royalties. So. <laughs> Well, that's good. I'll go with whatever a, a large magazine thinks is legal. <laughs> I don't know who put this next one up here, but... Uh... I can't see what could go wrong. That was me. <laughs> I just like the idea that Chinese are trying to develop a submarine that will use something called super cavitation. That, that so, doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, they want... They, if, in theory, super cavitation works. Uh, cavitation oh, yeah. is, you know, when the kind of air bubble forms around your underwater vessel, and generally cavitation is bad. Super cavitation is like, essentially, you're plowing through and using the air bubble as a way of reducing uh, the friction between you and the water. So they think they can get a sub to go from one end of the Pacific to the other, so from China to the U.S., in about 100 minutes. Huh. I can't see a problem with this. Yeah. There, there, there are things in the water. Yeah, I'm thinking small marine mammals called yeah, little. large marine mammals, <laughs> medium-sized marine mammals, and fish. Fish, <laughs> calamari, anyone? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're I probably think heating the water just... on top. I mean, basically, you're trying to say, I want to pretend to be a mantis shrimp across the entire ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I, that that can't go wrong at all. No. Uh, yeah, we already have a problem with heating up the ocean. Yeah, well, this will yeah. be faster, and it'll, it'll cook things in the process. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about we make a sub that's powered by uh, oceanic trash? No, well, that'd be kind of awesome. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm getting this image of, of guys back in the coal furnaces like in old steamships. But... <laughs> <laughs> Shovel faster! <sighs> Captain wants to go water skiing. So, so what is this about our technology and, and, and us wanting to, you know, fry animals with it? Uh, because, oh, because they're fun. delicious. Because we, we know not what we do. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, that solar array out in, what was it, California, California Arizona, yeah. or whatever? Takes out a couple birds. Yeah, well, a couple birds. <laughs> like, a couple birds a day, yeah. apparently. It's not the solar array's fault for that the birds fly in the way of the light beam. Yes, you're the victim blame the birds. <laughs> Zotch. <laughs> well, then there's... The, I mean, it doesn't even need to be something like that. There's that... Uh, God, was it a building in England where it has that oh, curved yeah. Yeah, face the, the, that yeah. actually creates a freaking laser beam and fries people on the sidewalk? <laughs> yeah, he's, he people also melts, melts parts of cars. Yeah. Whoops. Yep. Humanity, uh, we can't have nice things. <laughs> there's one there's one picture of a store entrance that gets hit one, once in a while, and it's got on the floor a nice little burn spot. <laughs> from the... <laughs> uh, so. 
like, yeah, when you design oh, yeah. a building, you might want to bring some of that. Uh... <laughs> I, I don't really see the submarine coming to fruition is all I can say. But... Yeah, I, I think that's wishful thinking. I mean, we, 100 minutes. No. Yeah, in theory, I mean. Why would you want to do that through the water anyway? Because it's cool. <laughs> Sequest. I, Fuck yeah. <laughs> No, I know. It How just seems like it'd be easier to fly. Yeah, you know, it's air. Less or a zip flight. line or something. <laughs> well, I, mean, I can imagine uh, zip lining across the ocean to get boring after a while. Oh, probably. Oh, my arm's tired. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of like I can't see a problem with this at all. No, no, not really. So. Unless you want to do a whole alternative history arms race and instead of you know shooting missiles over land, we're going to shoot them through the water and do all the assured destruction that way. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the scientists are so preoccupied whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think to if they should. Exactly. Plus, it's China. <laughs> okay. China doesn't exactly have a great history of caring about the ecology. <laughs> yeah, so. no. uh, more depressing news. Um, yeah. Home Depot. Hope you don't didn't shop there in the last several months. I did. Yeah. Well, banks. Uh, this is from uh, Krebs on security. Um, banks are reporting as of this last day or so, they're seeing stolen credit card numbers come up um, from Home Depot. Uh, appears to be the same group of Russian hackers that went after Target, PF Chang's, and others. Um, the scary thing is the breach, they're not sure yet, but the breach might go back all the way to late April, early May, which means we're talking several times more credit card numbers breached than the target breach, so a lar- larger number. Theoretically, they think this is being done retaliation for U.S. sanctions. <laughs> oh, jeez. What? Because those patriotic Russian hackers are so patriotic, <clears throat> or just need an excuse. Yeah, but the timing doesn't line up if you're going Ooh. all the way back to May and April. Not Pre-emptive really. Preemptive retaliation. Preemptive retaliation. Yeah, we were saying bad things about Crimea when Putin took that. Putin's Crimea. But yeah, so keep track of your uh, your credit cards, basically. The breaches are still happening. I, my personal thing is happening is as one retailer catches up and gets the security in place, they're finding which which ones still are vulnerable yeah. as it were, and yeah, working their way through. Also, uh, the security breaches. Oh yeah, the fun one from this weekend. Uh, yep. Apple iCloud was hacked, and uh, several famous ladies had nude fo- nude photos stolen off of their phones, and then yep. posted on Reddit, I believe. If I remember yeah. right. 4chan. 4chan. Yeah, yeah. fun. So, the it's been interesting seeing the reaction to it because it's in the wake of all this noise being made about misogyny in gaming and misogyny in media and misogyny in comics. Yeah. And now there's this, you know, the... You have the people going, woohoo, naked pictures of Jennifer Lawrence. And then the reaction to that. Yep. And, it's, it, and the first few articles I saw come out about it were really interesting. There was one where it was, the, this is a sex crime. And it's, it is not the fault of the women who had the nude photos Correct. taken. Because there are... It's not against the law. They weren't doing anything wrong. They had ta- taken those photos for personal use, whatever it might be. And it's it's not a quote-unquote scandal. It is a sex crime because their privacy was violated and now it's being shopped around to the entire internet. And it's outright yeah. theft because mm-hmm. those are private images. Yep. Um, the iCloud hack is, is looks like it was a variety of vectors, some social hacking, some mm-hmm. um, ha- brute password hacking. It isn't a isn't that like there's a, a fundamental coding flaw with iCloud. It's more an implementation issue that there's ways to be able to get passwords out of iCloud, and right. other sites have to be just as careful. So if you're using Microsoft's products or any other cloud services, 
uh, they can be vulnerable in their own way, so yeah, be, watch out for it. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of the things that, that, that confused me, though, because when but, they were talking about the actual breach, it's like, it looked like they were using a brute force attack. Yeah. Well, well there, there's, there was kind of a two parts to it, because uh, as I understand it, it was um, basically a point where Find My iPhone talked to iCloud, mm-hmm. and the breach happened through the point where the two talk, and yep. the um, that that security point did not lock uh, attempts that failed the password five right. times. Well, so that, you could you could just infinitely brute force it. Yeah, that's, so, that's what, but but that's but the I'm thing wondering. is is what what they had what the hackers were doing were they they had somehow found specific accounts to target and then just brute forced their way into only the people they care about. I, I, yeah. As far as I know, it wasn't looking across all of iCloud to f- see who they could get at. It was very specific people and yep. then going after those accounts. Um, and on the legal side, at least one of the people, I forget which actress it is, um, some of the photos are of her underage, as in Ooh, not yet. Because wow. Reddit was in total guys, delete these now mode. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, yeah, fine, you want to share the sexy pics around, but these, we can't have these here. This is child prom now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <can> get arrested. <laughs> so they were, they were like st- uh, just madly going through today trying to get that off their servers <laughs> without people reposting it again and again and again. Yeah. Wow. Well. So, yeah, it's, 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 I, I agree with the whole crime part. I mean, it's, it's both theft of private property, it's breaking privacy, it's just, like, no, this is not proper in any way, shape, or form, so. <sighs> yeah. Speaking of Russians. <laughs> oh, no, not Russians. I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say that the... The sexy space lizards passed away. No more gecko porn. No more gecko porn. So a while ago, Russia launched a satellite called Photon M4, because we have neat names for satellites in Russia. Um, And it had geckos on it. And the attempt was to film them. It was one male and four females um, dealing with microgravity, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And somewhere back in June, the Russians lost the satellite, or they lost control of it. And then somewhere in the beginning of August, they got control of it again, discovered everything was fine and copacetic, and they turned on their cameras finally to get their gecko porn. And then uh, the satellite was designed for reentry, and they're going to collect the geckos afterwards and their footage and the bunch of fruit flies are on there too doing stuff. And, well, they forgot to turn on the heater. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, heating system failed. The les- before it did reentry, the lizards froze to death. Poor lizards. This has nothing to do with the Hodorowski film in any way, shape, or form. No, no, uh. that would have been more explosive. <laughs> yes, in the atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the the geckos didn't make it. But what about the footage? We don't know. Oh, I suspect <laughs> it just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, it's like you don't want them to have died in vain. I'm sure there's a yeah. food chain board for gecko porn that has. <laughs> <active food>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just it's just this whole experiment from point A to point B. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> It's just ill-advised all the way around. I'm, just, I'm trying to think of how you get the grant for this as a, as a graduate student. What do you want to do? I want to put lizards in a satellite so we can watch them have coitus in zero G and see how they deal with it. Yeah, I'll give you ten grand for that. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a related link, not a related link. I'll, I'm gonna I'll add this link in our show notes um, because it's just. Interesting, because Russian scientists... It, well, Russian scientists um, within the same past two weeks have also found plankton outside the International oh, Space yes. Station. And uh, we won't go into it here, but I'll keep the link in the show notes for those I interesting. I that was interesting, too. It's like, on the outside. Who can you see we could skip it! That's all I always say. Okay. But the, the link will be there for those who want to find out how our plankton overlords are going to mutate and kill us. <laughs> as 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 jo- okay, so moving on. As Joseph Scrimshaw, as Joseph Scrimshaw has said about me, happiness is uh, for me anyway. For me, fast uh, happiness is a callback joke, and uh, and so now we're going to talk about the Iceland 
Uh, Bartabunga Volcano, Cold Red. Oh, wait, it's not. It's Code Orange. Actually, there's this link has changed a couple of times. It went from red to orange, and now it's, you know, it's at... It's been erupting, so it doesn't know what I, I want. That pretty red alert. Yeah. It's, it's 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 erupting very calmly, though. It's yes, a it's very erupting orderly calmly. volcano. Okay. Not a lot of ash. Very polite. Oh. So no ash cloud. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. basically what I got reduced yeah. from right yeah. down. But there are, there are pictures of it. It's cool. Now that it's finally erupting. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that for a while they weren't sure if it was erupting. Yeah, it's like we <laughs> don't know. We don't know, but we do know that millions of gallons of water went away underneath this glacier, but we're really not sure where. And then it finally <laughs> erupted. But, I mean, that was, like, one of the interviews, like, a couple days ago. I was like, well, we know the water is gone, but eh, how, do, how do you leave part of a glacier? <laughs> <laughs> it's Iceland. It's like, eh, you know. I slippery. swear we parked the glacier here. <laughs> it's heartburn, it's, it's indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. <laughs> Wow. My boyfriend, I'm... ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pep- Pepto-Bismol. Oh, no, I, I got it. Okay. I got great it. radio. Um. <laughs> great radio. Great, great radio, radio fest. And uh, let's see here. So, it, you know that thing called the Ice Bucket Challenge, to which people have varying degrees of opinions on? Which, obviously, the volcano tried to do, but failed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so yeah. the hell? Ice bucket challenge. Gling gling. Mushy mushy. Sorry about that. My phone went off. It's my landlord calling me at eight forty six p.m. Um, <clears throat> Your house is on fire. Yes. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the the uh, ALS uh, AS wait. ALS. ALS. A L S A. A L S A. Got to. I did that wrong. So the A L S A Association, who basically is a nonprofit organization that does has three different aspects of dealing with A L S, and one of them is researching for a cure, in addition to you know money for treating and care of of victims of. Uh, basically, Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, the the uh, the stunt, the the meme almost of ice bucket challenging has netted them over eighty million dollars more than the last year at this same point in time. So their donations are over a hundred million dollars and still counting. With some some people that have donated between a hundred thousand and two hundred thousand, including Leonardo DiCaprio. And the one of the CEO of T-Mobile, and you know things like that. They actually thanked a few of those people in particular recently, as well. So um, yeah, that's no, good cause. So you know, despite what your opinion may be about wasting water or the memeability of it just being stupid, um, for attention gathering, it at least nets a positive result of a good charity or organization getting funding, and uh, of which you can also check a box saying, I want all of my donation going to research. Oh, nice. Because mm-hmm. that's usually a problem with some places, is you're not sure where the money is going. Um, and, and some of them are more about self-sustaining them than actually getting the money to the right place. Mm-hmm. I won't well, I did, yet. I did take a look at Charity Na- Navigator for the ALSA, and uh, you know it has different chapters, but they all seem to be pretty pretty good good in terms of transparency and how they use their money also if you want an uh, explanation oh good so I, I mean I um, I mean my beefs with the ALS challenge is mostly the there are so many people who are doing the ice bucket challenge I think because they want to do stupid something stupid on the internet and they don't really know anything about ALS or why they're yeah. donating but mm-hmm. I mean Event eventually the money just does go to a good cause, so yep. you know, and you know ultimately you, it's fine by me. I just yeah. wish there was some way to also get money to other organizations that need it. I I yeah. I, I I really would like this ice bucket challenge 
like to be handed off to another organization next year. Yes, mm-hmm. I think yeah. that would be. I don't. I see. It's, it's hard to figure out how this would work. It'd be really cool if uh, AS, ALSA sort of worked something like that out. But uh, eh, you know, it's. Uh, yep. I mean, it's. I mean, it's a. It's yeah. It's a nonprofit organization, and they post their. Their their where their money goes, and so. Yep. Uh, and speaking of um, which... Oh, I was going to follow in. Just for those of you who want to find out more about ALS, oh, yeah. uh, SciShow channel, which is a YouTube channel, S-C-I-S-H-O-W, I'll try to find the link. They did their they did do the Ice Bucket Challenge, but as is classic for SciShow and their little 10 minutes but thing, they build it up by, by explaining to you in, in pretty decent terms what is ALS, why, what do we know about it, what do we not know about it. Uh, SciShow is one of the educational kind of channels and groups on, on YouTube that I find a lot of fun to watch, but their little ALS thing was really really informative if you don't know anything about Lou Gehrig's disease, essentially, and want mm-hmm. to find out more. And then again, they donate at the end, so. Yeah, I don't know, a crazy, crazy weird thing. Uh, it's, I, like, I'm personally having issues with my extremities, <laughs> and so I'm getting all paranoid <laughs> about what it might be because the doctor's not finding anything, and the doctor didn't particularly disconfirm that it wouldn't be this, so I'm a little worried about it, but uh, still. There, there are a lot of things that I'm... might not be. <laughs> right, right. So, so yes, in the immortal words of, of from the book The Kid by Dan Savage, when they're worried about their child and fetal alcohol syndrome, what's the first thing I did? I went to the internet like an idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In any case, um, I never, you know, regardless of everything, I, I, it didn't stop me from doing the ice bucket challenge in spite of not being challenged. Three and times. Glorious footage it is. Three times, yes. Uh, well, technically four, time. four times, but oh. I only nominated nine people. Two of which had problems with the ice bucket challenge, and two of which I've already donated. But I did manage to get one group to uh, follow in the. Uh, challenge and it was great um, and so I'll just put a link in the show notes moving on <laughs> uh, this th- who this is, is exciting to may vary uh, but I'm, it, I'm, I'm baffled by how much this takes up in our show notes I'm <laughs> just a bunch of notes uh, but uh, and this is just or it's, it's balanced by the next story that doesn't even have a link so yeah okay so <laughs> All right, so uh, from the Adventure Time cartoon show, uh, the characters Marceline and Bubblegum uh, apparently did date in the past. Now, these are two female characters in the show, and uh, it's but it's confirmed secondhand through a voice actor of the show uh, who had also since later deleted the comment and said that she says, some, says things that she shouldn't pay attention to sometime, apparently. Um, this... S- extends back to the creator basically not wanting people to speak for him, let's Ah. say. But uh, also because homosexuality is illegal in several countries in which the show airs, uh, that they would never reveal such a thing on the show, and also probably why uh, the creator does not want it brought up so that they don't get canceled in those countries. But... Um, a lot of the a lot of the uh, speculation that these two characters actually did have a rela- relationship was in season three with an episode called "What Was Missing," and uh, my GLBTQ friends all over the internet were freaking out about it and sharing things and such like that, especially from an of- a now former official episode wrap up YouTube account that had highly suggested it, um, and. Uh, and it's since later been taken down. But uh, uh, I will be including some links in the show notes of various parts of that episode, which may have you going, ah, in the context. So, but, you know, we still, you know, there's still not a whole lot of representation for the GLBTQ crowd, which is why, you know, we try to latch on to, you know, what we can or is available of what stuff you know we're you know it's you know I, I'm really wanting at some point just you know let's have some mainstream stuff that's LB, you know GLBTQ positive and not played off as a joke but yes not stereotypical agreed um, 
yeah, this is throwaway. Uh, Steve Ballmer, you know, he, he's left Microsoft. He's he's off the board. So what do you do in your spare time when you're Steve Ballmer and you have tons of money and tons of time on your hands? You binge watch 100 hours of The Good Wife. Because why not? Because why not? Because I'm Steve I mean, <laughs> Well, I presume he's been very busy for the last several years. Oh, yeah. He is wanting to catch up. And he has to run the Clippy. I mean, the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I never even thought of that. Oh, somebody, somebody redid the Clippers logo as Clippy already. Uh, <laughs> it looks like you're playing basketball. Would you like some help? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to triple shoot? <sighs> Do they already have a mascot? Because maybe they should. Uh, they they will now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a mascot on, with uh, adjustable uh, eyebrows. There we go. Yeah, on good news, Amazon. Oh yes, up? I I did. Ah. Um, so I saw this earlier today. Um, Amazon is reportedly reviving the Tick series with Patrick Warburton. Yay! And apparently, he's already signed on <laughs> to, to to do it if they do this. Cool. Yeah. Well, he enjoyed playing the character, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah he had fun. He he didn't like being upstaged by his own antennae. <laughs> <laughs> the. Um, I can see if, you, if you get your hands on the the DVD of the live action series, uh, entertain yourself mightily by uh, turning on the commentary tracks. Oh yes, because Ben Edlund is a crazy motherfucker, <laughs> and also the stories are very good. <clears throat> Do you have that? I should watch that. I don't think I own that at the what? moment. Ah, oh, you do. Um, I can I, loan it to you. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the live action one is actually still on Netflix too. I'm not sure. I, it, it comes and goes. It, comes I and don't goes. know if it's. I've seen, on. A, I've seen a couple of episodes of the live action. But you know, it has uh, Ron Perlman content, and that's all good too. Good. <laughs> yep. How does that theme song go? That's the animated one. That dwee that 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 dwee dow. Yeah, that was. Ah! The <laughs> Next, Melissa will do the uh, oh, shoot, Freakazoid anime Freakazoid, series. Freakazoid, friends around in underwear. Freakazoid, Freakazoid. <laughs> Yay. I okay. like Freakazoid a lot. Oh, I love Freakazoid. Also, we'll lose my favorite uh, anime series. Uh, sad news. On the, well, crap, why can't we have nice things, right? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of that going on these uh, days. Yeah, well, if you're not familiar with who, Anita Sarkeesian? Sarkeesian. Thank, thank you. Uh, she's been doing uh, Tropes vs. Women on YouTube. Uh, comments are always locked down for obvious reasons. But basically you're going through a series of tropes in the gaming world and how women are poorly treated or treated in misogynistic ways. Um, they're very educational. They they can be a bit uncomfortable if you're not used to watching hard critique like that. Yeah. Uh, but she does it very professionally, and she does does great research. And the fact that she like goes back to Mario Brothers, and and it's not just the current games that you would expect, mm -hmm. like you know Grand Theft Auto. She goes back, mm -hmm. and and shows a consistent narrative for any mm -hmm. of the tropes that she deals with. And that's why I find fascinating with them is that you know oh. she can show this history. Yeah, they're very 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 well done. Yeah. Um, and, of course, she has been getting the requisite number, as any woman in the gaming industry gets, of death threats uh, and various other threats. And, sadly, it got to the point this time where she actually called the cops and then left her apartment or house for several days because they actually got rather specific with the threats mm -hmm. to make her that uncomfortable. I believe she's now back in her house. Uh, but it's just the classic... You know the trolls get that can get that bad, and I just it's one of those things I don't get personally, and feel like I have to constantly apologize for my half of the the population. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like you know, if you show me where to shoot the gun, I, I'd be willing to. Uh, <laughs> it feels like that some days. Um, yeah. And and not that I might be sensitive as a father of daughters. Uh, so. You might be. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. But it's it's yeah. kind of sad that yeah that did happen. So yeah, it's her, I believe her her series is called Fem Frequency, and you can follow her on Twitter at femfrec that uh, at friendfrec. Okay. Frequency with yeah yeah her her Twitter feed's been very interesting the last couple of days because um, 
the stuff she reveals about the threats she's been getting are terrifying. Yeah. Uh, I mean the the specific threat where that chased you know chased her out of her house. She actually showed the photo or the screenshot of this Twitter feed of you know some anonymous yeah. uni- user like posting uh, you know, horrible horrible very specific threats against people of her family by name and where they all live specifically yeah. with their addresses and. Yeah, that that's kind of freaky. And this is dangerous stuff. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's what happened to Kathy Sierra Bates many years ago and got her out of the industry for a while. Uh, she's a tech writer and, and very good and was a job advocate. Um, but she got similar degree of threats just on the coding side, and that got basically forced her off the talking circuit for a while. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. And for those who think, oh, it's just threats, nothing can happen. Uh, going back to Krebs of Krebs on security. Okay, you know, default easy mode. He's a white guy. Um, because of the security stuff he's done, he's gone what the, the nice term being called swatted, where the SWAT team has shown up at his house with full guns drawn because they were told they were heading into a hostage situation. Mm-hmm. He has had one gram of heroin mailed to his house. He's able to track the whole thing online, and somebody said, oh, we should help him out. And so he called up the cops. He said, you're going to get a call saying it's my neighbors. It's not, da, da. And here comes the heroin in a nice package from the U.S. Post Office because it's taped into a magazine. And then he calls the cops over and says, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, st- people will do stuff like this, and it can yeah. result in physical violence. And so it's yeah. just horrible to see it. Well, there was, a, there was a woman in England very recently who... Um, I can't rem- I, I think she- I can't remember if she wrote for the gaming industry or not, but it was a very similar situation to the Sarkeesian situation, and she was getting the constant death threats and trying to get the police to do something about it, and to the point where people were showing up at her house and putting things on her doorstep, sort of yeah, thing, uh... and she was just having a terrible time getting police to do anything and you know the fact is is right now police forces don't know what to do or how to do it it's yeah. a brave new world to them this this weird internet thing yeah and you don't where, know when it's going to trigger to something real yeah. versus just online and yeah but yeah. when do you get the yeah. FBI involved in this because apparently they're the only ones that can do so it's like you just track the account and blah 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 I mean mm-hmm. you, you you follow the trace you contact Twitter etc I mean that's that's a good yeah. question because it's it's them having to balance caseload. So, sadly. I mean, really, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there needs to be another division of the FBI specifically to handle this sort of stuff. Uh, but I mean, you may think it like minor, but if it makes if armchair, uh, what, what should we call it? Armchair death threatening. I mean, it 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 just becomes commonplace if there's nothing to become of it, if there's no consequence, if it, if it exactly. goes unanswered. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah it, that, that, that's the worst part, because at some point somebody's going to escalate it, and I, I dread that day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That it gets yep. escalated beyond where it's at now. Yep. And I'm sure it's happened, in fact. I, I mean, I know it's happened, it's just not somebody with a big name yet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, again, like in the case of Krebs, it's mostly his local police force who gets to deal with it, and they're like, yeah. The mm-hmm. best reaction he's gotten is one of the cops saying, when I retire, I'm going to figure out how to get my name off offline as much as possible after watching what's happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, when, when the cop's telling you that, yeah, you can't Thanks for the vote of confidence, but please, dear God, do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well. So that's my sad story today. Uh, uh. Peaks? Somebody say some, peak. somebody say something cheerful. Something uh, cheerful. I saw a great movie. <laughs> okay, no. okay, go for it. Unless somebody else wants to go throw out their peak, I was going to use my great movie as my peak. Oh, go I don't, it. I don't have one yet. Okay, uh, so I actually tweeted you about this briefly. Uh, basically, I watched because um, Criterion is on Hulu Plus. Criterion has had this whole section of Naruse. He's a Japanese director, films in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, I don't know enough about him, sadly. But he's kind of like if you do the pantheon of you know Kurosawa and 
and whatever else. He's like number three or four. You don't hear him about him as much outside of Japan. And he's notorious for doing really cheap productions, like filming his actors separately so he can have fewer takes. <laughs> <laughs> but then they splice the conversation together later. Uh, well, this is one of his seminal films. It's about... It's a late 60s film, I want to say, uh, called When a Woman Ascends the Stairs. And essentially, it's this surprising little look into a Japanese hostess in the Ginza district. So basically, the you go to a bar in the Ginza district, and bars this time period, and still somewhat today, try to get clientele from, from companies. So you try to get basically patronages going. And the women have to like memorize the drinks of the... Of the, of the clientele and, and service them and everything. Uh, generally, there shouldn't be any sex, but sometimes that happens on the side, or the goal of the woman is maybe to land a salary man to take them away from all this. But essentially, they, they, they're a professional hostess at a bar. And it's following her from one bar that's kind of going downhill because one of the hostesses is left and essentially stolen the clientele. And how she, in this very man-dominated world, uh, is trying to stay independent. Of everything, and you know, doesn't want to get married, uh, doesn't really want to rely on one patron. So she actually plays a couple of salary men off each other, and and like they all ask her out for dinner, and she kind of provides play excuses. But also, it's a commentary on, on it because it's like she's from a, not a great background, monetarily speaking, but she, she has to keep this very nice apartment. She has to wear expensive per perfume, nice clothing all the time, because you have to have a certain look going. So your salary kind of gets sucked into this, and you really can't dig out really well. Her goal is to eventually start her own bar, hopefully. And there's also a big thing on youth. It's like, oh, you're about to turn 30. Either you should get married or you should start your own bar because you're getting old, that sort of thing. And for this very just, you know, slice of life, following her life sort of film, it's remarkably well-paced. It does. It's a little over an hour and a half, but doesn't bog down or anywhere, feel bogged down. Has some nice tension to it. You know, will she actually try to marry somebody or not, that sort of thing. And just kind of follows the life of her and some of her friends. And it's just a nice little set piece. It was kind of fun to watch. Mm. And very, cool. very surprising for the time period, too. I mean, I was couldn't find out how this was received in Japan because it seems to be, I wouldn't say a progressive view of women, but a very surprising, positive view of women to some extent in a, again, very male-dominated society that they're, you know, she's trying to be independent. She's trying to get somewhere. And, and that kind of surprised me, too, given the time period. So. Mm. Cool. So, when a woman ascends the stairs. Neat. Let's see. I stole one from Fess. I stole a peek from Fess. <laughs> As I, I technically had it written first, but I, I, I think you can uh, well better talk about it. Okay. So, uh, Fess and I went camping this weekend up in northern Minnesota, and uh, one of the things we wanted to get to was a small state park uh, up near Lake Vermilion called the Sudan Underground Mine. And it's an old uh, iron ore mine that was um, operating until the 1960s and then given over to the state of Minnesota uh, as a state park. And it's, first of all, very interesting to tour an iron mine, and that's why we went up there, to, because it's like, oh, this is an interesting state park with an iron mine, and I've never been in an iron mine, and we can go see what that's like, and we did. And, but the, the really cool thing we learned is when we got there, the iron mine isn't just being used for tours. It's got a physics lab in it. It's got a high-energy <laughs> physics lab in it. And you can tour that, too. I, I have not been able to yet. I've wanted to for a while. Yeah. I was say, plus, it has a villain's lair somewhere, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, yes, so one, I've of heard the, of this one, yeah. one of the things that's there in the physics lab that they take you through is the Minos, Main Injector Neutrino Oscillation Search, uh, which is a big experiment being run between this place and Fermilab. So Fermilab, which is near Chicago, is firing a beam of neutrinos through the planet to a receptor in the mine in northern Minnesota. It's 450 miles away. And so this, this receptor is this giant octagon of gigantic steel plates and uh, that's designed to catch neutrinos, and they catch a couple a day. <laughs> but you, you out, of a, out of a 
trillion, tri- almost several trillion. It's several trillion. Go! Of the day. Yeah, this this beam of neutrinos just goes wafting by, and every once in a while they catch one. So yeah, that that's there, and you can go in there and see it. And there's this giant bizarro mural on the wall that was painted by somebody from the University of Minnesota, and you can essentially stand in this giant beam of electrons that's being fired at you from Chicago. <laughs> I would say, do, do you get, keep a neutrino for, for good luck? I, I did my best, but you know they're very slippery. Now, but there's what, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say what I want to know is over in Chicago in Fermilab, is there a little sign on the emitter that says pew pew pew? I wish, and I really hope. <laughs> I I have yet to um, visit Fermilab, but I'll look. Uh, also, there there is a you don't get to tour this other lab, but they're basically cooling stuff to uh, within a fraction of a degree of absolute zero and looking for dark matter. They just don't want you to see the cans of beer nearby. I know, right? <laughs> so, you know, that, that's apparently happening there. And there is a biology lab that's re- researching Ooh. this uh, bacteria that they found in the mine that apparently eats iron. Nice. And NASA's very interested in it. So we do, you don't get to see that one either, presumably because... Mm, it's uh, a lost monster. It, you probably don't want contamination in that area. No. Yeah. But you do, get, you do get to go through the... Um, the neutrino <clears throat> detector, and it's very cool. Cool. Mm. Also, there are bats. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, actually. But yeah, that's that's one of my uh, science bucket list places. Yeah, it it is really awesome, and it's like twelve bucks for a ticket to take the tour. That's not well, bad. Yeah, it's two, really two awesome. Tours. There's two tours. One there is two tours. for the Minos detector, and the other is for the underground mine historical tour. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they're both the they're Dress both totally with it. Yeah, dress warm because it's yeah. really freaking cold down there. Oh, it's underground. <laughs> Luckily, Not you can tomorrow. you can buy a souvenir sweatshirt. At yeah, the I had shop. to buy a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> at the gift shop, and put on my. Uh, I, I brought some sleeping pants. I wore over my shorts. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's like fifty degrees down there, so it gets a yeah. little chilly and and very windy when you're on the uh, train ride. You get to ride on a train. Cool. Like half a mile underneath the earth. Cool. How far of a drive is this from us? Um, it's, it's not... quite a hike. It's like four three, miles? four hours. Four hours, yeah. Four hours, four hours um, from okay. Minneapolis. Yeah. It's uh, right up by Lake Vermilion. Uh, you can't camp in that park. It's pretty much just the mine, but, yeah. uh, there's, but there's a nearby is... state park called yeah. Bearhead where you can camp at. There's also little hotels there's, in the area. There's also Lake Vermilion uh, or Vermilion State Park, which is which is apparently new. Mm-hmm. Which next year I might be able to find some camping there as well. We I had to make some reservations uh, because it was getting kind of late. And you kind of got to... Oh, and the Bearhead is going 100% uh, reservation. Uh, everything is reservable, so you can't yep. count on luck if you're going to go up there. But, uh, right. Okay. Cool. Right. But there, there are plenty of cute little towns up there, too. There, so there are motels and things. It's fun. Oh, and and was was that uh, in Sudan or was that in Tower, Sudan. which is nearby? The 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 bar where that had the Ham's beer bear that was like life size that I wanted to steal. Oh, that wasn't no 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 that wasn't in Sudan because Sudan only has one store. Remember? Oh, that's right. Sudan has only one store and it's called Sudan's only store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back well, in the day. But, remember. Back in the day, that would have been the the mine owner's store, of which it was highly tied into uh, its base. I I listened to a podcast recently that's saying like uh, mines typically had their work paid their workers in like basically fake money um, that Mm -hmm. could be spent for their housing, which is owned by the. Owned by the company and the store that they would buy their food from for this hence, monopoly money. Hence the company store. Yep. Yeah. Your miners were called script. Miners were basically serfs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How uh, that would lead to the next movie, Mate Wan. I highly suggest that. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Which is so, one of the all right. I got a peek. Yes, yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it, Fess. Go for Furry it. Furry Migration is coming on uh, September 12th to the 14th. Um, it is uh, Minnesota's first full-on furry convention, 
Um, we just finished uh, recording and, and are editing the fourth promo video for the for the con. And uh, let's see here. You can buy tickets at the door. You can have fun going to uh, panels of which I will be at, as well as uh, other panels that other people will be at. But also mostly to go and see uh, people dressed up in fur suits and take pictures and get big hugs and uh, just have a lot of fun. Cool. Deferimmigration.com for more details. Yay. So that is it for this week. Anybody else? Anybody? Anybody? Nope. Bueller? Bueller? Bueller. Bueller. Well, I'm that has... Go. Yes? No, go ahead. Okay, well, that has been this week's episode of The Geek Life at thegeeklife.tv, episode 234, recorded for the week of September 1st, 2014. Um, you can find us on the web at thegeeklife.tv. Email us at thegeeklifetv at gmail.com. Voicemail, 1612-567-6515. Facebook, The Geek Life. Twitter, at The Geek Life TV. Google+, Plus. The Geek Life podcast, as well as our YouTube channel. As um, if you've been watching, we've been recording and broadcasting live as we record these. So if you like some extra special geek lifiness, you can check us out usually on Tuesdays at about 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Every other Tuesday. Every other, Every Tuesday. other Tuesday. Every other Tuesday. And with that, of course, this has been Melissa. Bye bye. Paul. Adios. Mike. Later. And me. Bye. Yay. I'm...